Mabon draws inspiration from ancient Celtic and other pre-Christian traditions, and the celebration as it's known today is really a modern adaptation. In this video, we'll talk about the various groups which celebrate Mabon, its cultural origins, why it's named what it is, how it's celebrated, and be sure to stick around to hear how the legendary King Arthur is involved with Mabon. Mabon is primarily celebrated in modern neo-pagan and Wiccan traditions, which draw inspiration from various sources, including Celtic, Druidic, and other nature-based belief systems. In the 20th century, various neo-pagan and Wiccan traditions emerged, seeking to revive or reconstruct ancient religious practices. They drew inspiration from a wide range of sources, including folklore, historical texts, and archaeological findings. Mabon was introduced as one of the eight Sabbaths on the Wheel of the Year to mark the autumn equinox. Many neo-pagans who follow eclectic paths, which means they draw from multiple traditions or create their own personalized practices, may also incorporate Mabon into their celebrations. They may take inspiration from Wicca, Druidry, and other nature-based belief systems. Some neo-pagans follow reconstructionist paths, which involve attempting to reconstruct and revive ancient religious practices. While there is limited historical information on specific ancient Celtic celebrations of Mabon, reconstructionist practitioners may draw on what is known about ancient Celtic festivals and adapt them for modern practice. Other neo-pagans, particularly those who focus on goddess worship, may incorporate Mabon into their celebrations as a time to honor the feminine aspects of the divine associated with the harvest and abundance. Wicca is a modern pagan religion that emerged in the mid-20th century. It places a strong emphasis on nature worship and the cycles of the seasons. Mabon is one of the eight festivals that make up the Wheel of the Year in Wiccan practice. It's a time for giving thanks for the harvest, for balancing light and dark, and for preparing for the winter months. The poet and scholar Robert Graves played a significant role in popularizing Celtic and neo-pagan themes in the mid-20th century. His book, The White Goddess, explored themes of ancient goddess worship and it had an influence on the development of modern neo-pagan practices, including the celebration of Mabon. The Celts, who were an ancient Indo-European people, celebrated various harvest festivals. One of the most well-known of these was likely the Festival of Lunasa, which celebrated the first fruits of the harvest. While Mabon is not directly derived from any specific ancient Celtic festival, it shares thematic elements with these harvest celebrations. In Celtic culture, Mabon celebrates the autumn equinox, which usually falls around September 21st in the Northern Hemisphere. As one of the eight annual festivals, it marks important points in the solar calendar for Celtic culture, as well as for other traditions. The Druids, who are members of an ancient Celtic religious and intellectual elite, are often associated with the changing of seasons, including Mianfor, which means September, or the middle of autumn, in Irish Gaelic. The Druids were known to be skilled astronomers and may have observed celestial events such as the equinoxes. They may have marked these occasions with ceremonies or rituals. They were known for their wisdom and spiritual insight, so they may have used the equinox as a time for personal reflection, meditation, as well as seeking insights from the natural world. Fire also held significant spiritual symbolism for the Celts. They may have lit ceremonial fires as part of their equinox observances. However, knowledge of the Druids is limited and often based on fragmentary historical and archaeological evidence as they did not leave behind substantial written records of their own practices. Mabon is named after the Welsh god Mabon ap Modron, who was associated with youth, music, and freedom. The name Mabon ap Modron means divine son of the divine mother or the great son. He is often described as a mysterious and heroic figure. Mabon's most prominent appearance in Welsh mythology is in the collection of stories known as the Mabinogian, specifically in the tale of Kilhook and Olwyn. In the tale, Kilhook, the story's hero, seeks to win the hand of Olwyn, a maiden of extraordinary beauty. However, to win her hand in marriage, Kilhook must fulfill a series of seemingly impossible tasks set by Olwyn's father, Uspathaddon, the chief giant. Luckily for Kilhook, he's able to seek the help of his cousin, 
King Arthur. Yes, that King Arthur, who was renowned for his legendary knights and warriors and his infamous round table. Killuk, along with Arthur and his knights, embark on a grand quest to complete these tasks. They face numerous challenges, battles, and encounters with magical and monstrous beings. Killuk's cousin, a warrior by the name of Gore, plays a particularly important role in the quests. Gori's combat skills and contributions were instrumental in overcoming many obstacles that were encountered during their journey. One of these tasks is to capture the Terra Truth, a magical and monstrous boar that was once a human prince. Terra Truth was originally a prince named Terrid, who was transformed into a swine by a witch's curse. The curse also affected his offspring, who became the seven piglets that accompany him. The problem is, it can only be tracked by a special hunting dog called Drudwin, which can only be controlled by Mabon. To add to this problem, Mabon is a young man who has been wrongfully imprisoned since childhood, and no one seems to know where he is. In the story, there is a long quest to find Mabon, seeking the assistance of several animals to discover Mabon's whereabouts. Legend has it that a salmon on Thane Thew, which is a lake in Wales, tells Kuluk that as it swam upstream, he could hear Mabon imprisoned from within the walls of Gloucester Castle. Mabon is freed by Arthur and his knights, and they embark on a quest to capture Terra Turth. They pursue the boar through various lands and face numerous challenges along the way. These challenges include battles with other supernatural creatures, such as giants and witches. After a series of battles and magical encounters, the knights manage to capture Terra Turth. However, Terra Turth is mortally wounded during the confrontation. Before he dies, he reveals information about the comb and scissors needed to complete another of Uspothaddon's tasks. As one of the tasks, Kilhook and his companions set out to retrieve these items from between the ears of Terra Turth's two piglets. This task, too, proves to be challenging, but they eventually succeed in obtaining the items. With the completion of these and other tasks, Kilhook is finally able to marry Olwyn, and Uspathaddon, the chief giant, is ultimately defeated. The story concludes with a description of the festivities and celebrations surrounding the wedding. Mabon ultimately played a crucial role in the successful completion of these tasks. However, once the tasks are complete and Kilhook marries Olwyn, the narrative in the tale does not provide further information about Mabon's subsequent adventures or endeavors. Mabon is highly important to the story of Kilhook and Olwyn, but he is not a central figure in Welsh mythology compared to other characters like Arthur or some of the other Celtic deities. While Mabon's origins and parentage are not extensively detailed in the existing texts, he is often associated with youth, music, and freedom. He is sometimes considered a representation of the eternal, vital, and divine youth in Celtic mythology. Traditionally, Mabon is a time for feasting, expressing gratitude for the bounty of the harvest, and for performing rituals that honor the changing seasons. People might also engage in activities like apple picking, making wreaths, and creating altars with symbols of the season such as fruits, vegetables, and colored leaves. The festival is a time to give thanks for the harvest and to prepare for the darker half of the year. The autumn equinox is a point of balance in the solar year when day and night are roughly equal in length and is signified by the sun crossing over the celestial equator. It's a time to reflect on the balance of light and darkness in our own lives and in the natural world.